welcome my dear students in previous video we have seen what are tenses which are the main types of tenses and its subtypes so today we are going to learn in detail each type so let's start with simple present tense so first as you know there are different types of sentences like statement interrogative sentence negative sentences so according to that there are different forms so first we will understand the form of simple present tense so statement what is the form for statement subject plus verb in first form plus remaining part of the sentence so it may be a uh, object may be a complement or anything else so remaining part of the sentence so is not a so subject what is subject one who does the action that is the subject so verb in its first form that is v1 root form of verb let us see the example i learn my lesson daily so learn this is your verb in root form that is v1 form so this sentence is in simple present tense you come to school late come you come to school late next parents love their children so see the form subject this is subject this is verb and this is remaining part of the sentence so you is the subject now is verb in first form and this is remaining part of sentence parents is subject love is verb in first form and their children remaining part of the sentence sham flies bite in the evening flies so now see here sham flies which is the main verb here fly but i have used here flies he or she reaches the school in time so here also main verb is reach and i have added yes here also main verb is fly and i have added yes why because the subject is third person singular sham is third person singular he and she is also third person singular so when we use simple present tense we have to keep in mind that you need to add s or es to the third person singular in simple present tense is it clear what you have to add s or es to the main verb for third person singular okay now let us see the form of interrogative sentence interrogative means a question so what is the form of a question in simple present tense do or does plus subject plus verb in first form plus remaining part of the sentence now here whenever there is a main verb we need to use do or does to make it interrogative so when we use do i we you they for these pronouns we use do and for he she it we use does it means for third person singular we use does and for the many persons we use do to make interrogative sentences for example do you know me now the subject is you so i have used here do okay does he visit the playground daily so subject is he that is third person so we have used here does why does she be now this is a wh question these are just no questions so answer will be either yes or no so it started with do or does but this is wh question so 
before the word does, we need to add wh word. So why does she be? So again, remaining uh, construction is say. She does subject plus verb. Okay. Next, now negative. What is negative sentence? The sentence which contains the words like no, not, never. These are called negative sentences. So what is the form of negative in simple present tense? Subject plus do not or does not. So do not or does not, it depends upon the person. Okay. Plus verb in its first form plus remaining part of the sentence. So you do not know me. If you is the subject, so you second person, so we have to use here do not. You do not know is the verb in first form. You do not know me. Okay. Next, he does not visit the playground daily. Now here, subject is he, so we have used does not and verb is visit. He does not visit the playground daily. They do not like you. Again, the subject is they, so we have used do not. And verb in its first form, like. So now, if you will say, well, it is he, then why we do not add the s for visit, isn't it? Because already we have added es for the verb do. So, for main verb, we should not add s or es. Because already, we have added here for helping work that is do. Okay. So this was the form of simple present in statements, interrogatives, and negatives. Now, when do we use simple present? So let's see the use of simple present tense. So the first use is to describe an action done regularly. Whatever actions are done regularly on the daily basis. So for that actions, we use simple present tense. For example, we walk to school every morning. Now this is a daily work. This action is done on everyday basis or daily. And so we use simple present tense here. We walk to school every morning. Ronnie always sings in his bath. Now this is also his regular action, daily action. So we use your simple present tense. My watch keeps good time. So the watch keeps good time every day. So we use simple present tense. So the first rule is that simple present tense is used to describe an action done regularly. So whatever actions are done regularly, for that we use simple present tense. Now second is second use is to express general truth or scientific fact. So whenever we talk about any general truth or any scientific fact, we use simple present tense. For example, the earth moves round the sun. Now this is a truth or this is a fact, isn't it? So we use simple present tense. Next, plants grow well when they get enough water, air and sunlight. It is a scientific fact that whenever the plant gets enough water, air and sunlight, they grow well. So we use your simple present tense. Next, two and two makes four. Right? Two plus two, four. The answer will not change. It is a fact. So when we express or when we describe the fact or general truth, we use simple present tense. So the third use is to indicate an event of action that has been planned for the future. If some action is planned for the future, 
when he is going to return. So we use here simple present tense. Next, the school reopens next week. Now this is this is also future activity which is planned, and hence we have used here simple present tense. So have you understood when to use simple present to describe action done regularly? To express general truth or scientific facts and indicate an event or action that has been planned for the future. So, for these purposes, we use simple present tense. Now, we have seen the form and use of simple present tense. Now, let's see the form of present continuous tense. So, here also. Statement, interrogative act, negative. So let's see one by one with examples. So statement, the form is subject plus is and or are plus present participle. Present participle means ing form of verb plus remaining part of the sentence. For example, the train is running at full speed. So the train is subject. Is running is the verb which is in present continuous tense at full speed. Next example, I am revising my lesson. So I is subject, am revising is the verb in present continuous. They are playing cricket. They is subject and are playing is the verb. Next is interrogative sentence. So what is the form of present continuous in interrogative sentence? The form is is, am or are plus subject plus present participle plus remaining part of the sentence. For example, is Sureka sitting in the room? So is Sureka sitting in the room? So, is sitting is the verb. Am I wasting my time in gossip? And thus, I am the form of verb. Next, are you coming here tomorrow? Are coming. So, whenever we use ing form, that is continuous. Okay. Next, negative sentences. So, let's see the form. Subject plus is, am, or are plus not plus present participle. Okay. So I am not going home today. They are not flying kites. So are plus not plus present participle that is ing form of verb. He is not waiting for his father. So these are the forms of present continuous tense. Already you know when to use M. M is used with I. Then is is used with he, she, it. And R is used with you and they. So now let us see the uses of present continuous tense. When to use present continuous tense? So the first use is to describe event or action that is taking place at the time of speaking. So when the person is speaking, at that time, whatever events or action takes place. So to describe those events or actions, we use present continuous tense. For example, mother is baking a cake for me. So this action is going on when I am speaking. Okay. So mother is baking a cake for me. So is baking. I am reading a book. What I am doing now by speaking? Reading. I am reading a book. The baby is sleeping. So he is sleeping. So when the action goes on at the time of speaking, for that we use present continuous tense. Second use is to describe a temporary situation or action that is currently true or taking 
English grammar. Means it is a correct situation. So we cannot do it at once, isn't it? It takes time. So that is a correct situation. And uh, it is not necessary that he is acting at the time of speaking. So for that purpose also we use present continuous tense. We are learning to cook. So is it a one day time or to learn cooking? Can you learn cooking in one day? No. So that is a temporary action going on. It is continuing for some days. So for that purpose we use present continuous tense. Next example. What is your brother doing these days? So what is your brother doing these days? So this is also a situation which is going for different days. It is not necessary that it is going on at the time of speaking. So these days, it is not now, these days. Yeah? So here also we use present continuous tense. Now let us see the third use of present continuous tense. The third use is to describe an event or activity that is planned for the future. So whatever activities or actions are planned for future, to describe those activities we use present continuous tense. At that time we often use the adverbs of time. You know the adverbs of time, right? Soon, now. So these are all adverbs of time. So with adverbs of time, we use to describe the event or activity that is planned for the future. For example, I am meeting my sister tomorrow. Now tomorrow is adverb of time. So I am meeting. That is the verb which is in present continuous. So I am meeting my sister tomorrow. So this is a future planned activity. And to describe that future planned activity, we use present continuous tense. Next example, they are buying a new car soon. They are buying a new car soon. This is soon. That is also adverb of time. And it is planned action for future. And so we use present continuous tense. For example, I am hoping to complete my homework later. Later is also adverb of time. So with that, this is also a future planned activity and we use present continuous tense. Next use is repeated actions. Whenever uh, we talk about the actions which are repeated very often, uh, which are done regularly. For that, we use present continuous tense and we use a uh, adverb of frequency. So, which are the adverbs of frequency? Always, regularly, continually. So, these are the adverbs of frequency. So, most of these actions which are repeated, so we use adverb of frequency while we talk about these activities in present continuous Tense. For example, they are regularly arguing about something or the other. So, continue repeated activities. Regularly they keep on arguing. Yes, so that is the repeated activity and to talk about it, we use present continuous tense. He is forever talking in the class or you can say he is always talking in the class. This action goes on repeatedly. So we have used here adverb of frequency that is forever. So he is talking that is your verb. Next, somebody is continually ringing the doorbell. So this action is also repeatedly going on. So for that we use present continuous tense. I hope you have understood the use of present continuous tense. Now let's move towards present perfect Tense. So first we will see the form of present perfect tense and then we will see its uses. So the first is statement. So what is the form? Subject plus has or have plus past participle plus remaining part of the sentence. Now 
has, she has, it has. And for other person we use have. I have, we have, you have, they have. Okay. So have has plus past participle. Past participle that is the three form of the verb. For example, we have 
since we were four years old. Still now that action is going on. Still we are studying in the same school and maybe this activity will go on in future also. So to describe such events we use present perfect tense. Second example, the policemen have already spent two hours chasing the robbers. So already two hours are spent that is past still the policeman is chasing the robbers it is going on in the present and maybe it will take some more hours to complete that activity next example rocky has longed to be a film star since his childhood so since his childhood ronnie has longed to be a film star so that action started in the past and still it is continuing and it may continue up to his lifetime. So the actions which started in the past and which can continue in the present or in the future to describe those actions we use present perfect tense. The third use is to describe a habitual or characteristic
remind you of the verb plus repeating part of the sentence. For example, the baby has been sleeping for one hour. So has been sleeping. The verb has been sleeping indicates present perfect continuous tense. Next, it has been raining since morning. Has been raining. They have been playing cricket for two hours. Have been playing. So this is the format. Subject plus have or has plus been plus present participle. That is ing form of verb. Now let's see the form of interrogative sentence. So the form is has or have plus subject plus been plus present participle plus remaining part of sentence. For example, have you been waiting for me for a long time? So have you been? Have been? You is your subject. So have been waiting. It indicates present perfect continuous tense. Have we been working since morning? Have been working. We is the subject. Has she been reading over two hours? Has been reading. So this is the verb which indicates present perfect continuous tense. Now next negative. The form of negative sentence. Subject plus has or have plus not plus been plus present participle. For example, it has not been reading. All the four kinds of 
in the next part we will see in our another video